Alrighty, guys, it's Day Daddy once again, and I just want to start as always by saying thank you for taking interest in my channel, and I really hope the content I provide is useful for you. Um, if it is, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like and subscribe button so I can continue to grow and provide more quality content. And if you really enjoy the content, you might even consider buying me a coffee, and the instructions and the link for that is in the video description below. All right, let's get into business. Um, so this is the fourth video in the Scappy series, and um, it's kind of morphed into more of a uh, networking, a slight networking series. Um, we're basically trying to take Scappy and implement something, um, you know, useful, a useful project with it. Um, and so what we're trying to do is we're trying to implement a DNS forwarder. Um, and specifically a DOH forwarder, so DNS over HTTPS, and that'll become more clear as we go through. So today we're just going to be talking about, you know, what is a DNS forwarder, what is DOH, um, and going through some of the specifics of that to get a better idea of what this project really is going to be. Okay, so what is a DNS forwarder? Um, it's actually really simple. Uh, it's the process where DNS requests are forwarded to a designated DNS server for resolution. So that's the definition I copied and pasted, but really what that means is um, you're going to send your DNS request to another machine, another server, and that server is going to be a DNS forwarder, and its whole job is to take your DNS request and forward them or send them, let them pass through it, to a uh, particular DNS resolver. And that resolver is gonna go out on the internet and it's going to actually resolve that, um, that domain name that you're looking for, uh, or sorry, resolve the, so you send a domain name or a host name and it's gonna send you back an IP address or whatever the case. Um, and whatever you're looking for, that answer is gonna be sent back to the forwarder and that answer is gonna be forwarded back to you. So, and we'll, I mean, that may seem kind of redundant, you know, at this point. Um, it is pretty simple, but we'll talk about why it's, uh, why it's actually beneficial here in just a minute. But, again, just want to stress, it is very simple. It just collects packets and forwards them to the DNS, DNS resolver. That's literally all it does. Sometimes it will have, I mean, in our case, that's all it's going to do, but sometimes it will have caching, um, you know, which can also help improve um, efficiency, but we're not going to worry about that at this point. Okay, so with a normal DNS request, what actually happens? So you're the client, okay, um, and you send your packet to uh, a DNS server. In this case, this would be the DNS resolver. So that client is going to, on your behalf, it is going to go figure out what that, so say, like, let's say you send up google.com. Okay, and you want to know the you need to know the IP address of Google.com so you can you know go get your uh, content or your your you know your Google search that you just made. Well, so you're gonna send it out to the resolver. The resolver is gonna go out through the internet to the root DNS, to some of the top level domains, all the way down until it finds out where that server actually is and gets that specific IP address. Then it's gonna come back, and then it's gonna come back to you, and you're gonna be able to actually <coughs> go. Uh, make that search and retrieve the information from the correct IP address. And that's how it normally it normally works. Um, so you're, you're thinking, okay, that's great. Why would we want to change it? Well, this is DNS with forwarding, or this is one example of how this might actually look. But imagine that it's not just you anymore. You and your entire company are all on the same network. And that network has a firewall and your IT department is working really hard to keep everybody safe and they want that firewall to be broken as little as possible. So they want as little holes in this firewall as possible. So if every single, per imagine there's 100 computers over here. So if every person is following the same pattern that we just saw, so imagine if you go back a slide, there's a hundred of these, and each of these computers is individually c contacting this server. Well, 
that means that if there's a firewall around the company, that each of these computers is breaking through that firewall at different points. And that's really bad for security. So that's one drawback. But another drawback might be maybe you, you have so many, maybe your company is so large that you have so many requests that, um, well, actually, let's back up for a minute because we need to talk about in, internal and external servers. But basically, so if you have a real large company, you're, you're going to have an internal DNS server. So your request is going to be routed instead of to the DNS resolver. It's going to go to an internal server first. And they're going to try to figure out, okay, is this a internal, like, can we handle this internally? Um, do we already have the address cached? Um, and if so, they can go ahead and give you the information that you need. And there's no reason for you to go out any further. Um, so let's say that you don't. Let's say that you, you come to one of these. It's the, what you're looking for is not inside your network. It's not cached from a previous query. So you have to go out. Okay, well now you've made it finally to um, the packet firewall. And the packet firewall is basically, and this is, I guess, where it would be hosted, but um, it's just looking through and it's monitoring what packets are going through, looking for suspicious stuff, looking for IP addresses that are, that are blacklisted or whitelisted, depending on what the security scheme is. And it's just trying to make sure that no packets are getting through here that aren't supposed to. So then we come out here to the actual forwarder itself. So this, the forwarder in, in, this, in this scenario actually lives outside of the network because we want, um, we only want to contact this known forwarder that, that we know and, and trust. And then this forwarder on our behalf is going to forward to the actual resolver out on the internet that's going to resolve our traffic for us. So really it's, it's a way of mitigating, um, it's a way of mitigating the amount of traffic we have to push through this firewall. And instead of going to maybe a server that we don't, a server we don't know and trust, we can pick the forwarder. And basically, even if this forwarder gets compromised, it's still outside of, it's still outside of the firewall. So nothing internal um, is going to be compromised. So it's, it's a way to not only increase security, but imagine, too, if there were thousands and thousands of computers, well, if we all try to hit the same DNS forwarder, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to overload. But if we have multiple ones, then we can have a, a subsection of, of computers go to one and go to the other and go to the other. And all of these can be forwarded to the same uh, DNS resolver at the end of the day. Like, for example, if, you pay, if your ISP has one set up for you, then you can forward it uh, to that particular DNS resolver. So all, for all these reasons, and that's called load balancing. So for all these reasons, um, those are some reasons why you, you might want to have DNS forwarding. And this is a more complicated example, but it'll become more concrete because I've actually drawn a, a simpler one out um, down later in this video, more, more closely related to what we'll actually be implementing in our project. But I just wanted to get you a flavor of why this is useful in the real world uh, and why people would care about this. Okay, and so we've already kind of talked about some of these, but basically um, these are just the ones that I copied off of one of the sources, um, but just kind of spelled out in simple bullet points. But so singular controlled points of network entry and exit, we talked about that. Um, we don't want to expose internal DNS information to the open internet. Okay, that makes sense. Um, we want to improve caching efficiency. So that that also makes sense, right? Because if we're going to the same, so each of these servers has a has a cache. So if we can funnel more traffic through a particular server, it's going to have a larger cache, and the chances are we don't need to go to we don't need to go any further down the line if the uh, IP address that we want is already stored in the cache. So it's uh, efficient in that regard, and then also load balancing. So while we imp are improving efficiency by funneling a lot of traffic to the same place, we can also kind of do a little bit of the opposite and break up 
some of the traffic to different places if we have too much traffic so that it's overloading one of our servers. All right, so now let's look at regular DNS versus DOT versus DOH. So regular DNS, and we'll look at it, we'll look at a packet, but think of it as regular DNS, that's what you would use every day. It's unencrypted, it's UDP, um, and it's over port 53. Um, it's quick, it's fast, efficient, but it's unencrypted and it's unsafe. So the alternatives to this are DOT, um, DNS over TLS, which is basically just the same thing. We just throw TLS in there on top of UDP for encryption. So that's good. That's, they're actually, we'll talk a little bit more about the, the benefits here in a second, but that's, that's a good, it's a good thing. So you get uh, UDP still, which is um, simple light packets, um, connectionless packets, and um, but you still get encryption. However, it uses a weird port. So it uses this port uh, 8553. And I'm not going to tell you why it's important yet. I'll see if anybody can figure it out. But um, <clears throat> so that versus DNS over HTTPS. So that's DOE. And the idea here is that's, that's basically HTTPS on top of TCP. And inside of that HTTPS uh, payload, it, that encapsulates the, uh, the DNS request, if that makes sense. So it's, bas it's basically two different encryption schemes, right? This is TCP, so it has connections, a little bit slower, um, a little bit more robust. This is basically still has the lightness of UDP, um, but both of them work. But my question to you is, why would why would DOH be more beneficial from a security standpoint than uh, DOT? And I'll pause for just a second to let you guys think about that. So, why would we want DOH? So, and I was talked about it being a funky port before. So. Port 8553 is unique to DOT. So while traffic is encrypted, anyone with network visibility can see what traffic is going over, going through that port. So you may think, well, okay, but why do you care? It's encrypted. Well, sometimes just based on the frequency of packet transmission, you can guess what's going on over the network. So well, you, you would probably be like 98% safe. There's still a chance that somebody just based on the frequency, the timing that your packets are, are going over the network and the packet size itself, which is measurable, they would be able to kind of back calculate what, what is actually going on in the network, which you may or may not want. So that's one you know slight drawback um, to uh, DOT versus DOE, but DOT is lighter um, and connectionless so, I mean, connectionless could be a good or bad thing depending on, you know, what you're looking for. But anyway, it's it's bad in that respect. But port 443 is used by all HTTPS traffic. So, naturally, the DNS queries are camouflaged by other traffic. So, they're encrypted and they're camouflaged. So, from a, from a security standpoint, DOH is probably superior to DOT. Okay. So let's look at DNS forwarding via DOE. And this is just a regular DNS packet versus a DOE packet. This is kind of what we were talking about earlier, but this is really uh, looking at the actual packet structure itself. And this is a really simple drawing, but I think it'll illustrate the point. Um, so with DNS, you have the network header or the ethernet header, you have the IP header, UDP header, and on top of that, or I guess I'd say under that, at the very core, you have the DNS payload. And you can about think about this as kind of like, um, 
a bunch of like a Russian nesting doll, right? So this is the outer layer and then one layer below and then one layer below and then this is the kind of the central layer. <clears throat> and the same thing here. So everything's the same up until the fact that we have the TCP header um, and then we have the HTTPS payload and then inside of that is just is the DNS payload. So you can see the structural differences here. But the, the trick for us um, is going to be how can we so we're, we're going to be receiving packets of this type and we're going to be sending out packets of this type and then we're going to be getting these back. So if we're going to have to swap between these two packet types when we are building our DNS um, or sorry, our, our, our DOE forwarder. All right. So for us, how would this actually work? So again, in our case, we probably wouldn't have an enterprise network. We may have a couple of clients um, all connecting to this DOE forwarder, and they're going to be sending regular DNS traffic. So they're going to be sending this. So this is going to go to the DOE forwarder, and it's going to have to get converted into DOH traffic. So <clears throat> what that would look like is we basically had to strip out or would have to strip out this DNS payload and then stick this DNS payload inside of this other packet we've just crafted. So, and that's something we'll have to figure out how to do with Scapia, but how to stick this payload inside of this HTTP, um, or sorry, HTTPS uh, header. And then, so that traffic, that, n that newly, newly made packet with the same payload is going to have to be stuck or is shipped all the way out to the DNS resolver. In this case, I happen to know that 9.9.9.9 .9 is a DOH resolver or one that works with DOH. Um, and that's going to go out on our behalf and it's going to go through the internet and it's going to look for whatever website we get. It's going to try to uh, resolve that IP. And then finally, when it gets it, it's going to get it back to this DNS resolver. And then that's going to be shipped back over DOH to us. And then we're going to have to break this packet apart again and swap it back to the original DNS to be shipped out to whatever client requested uh, that uh, or made that DNS request. So that's kind of uh, a basic look at what we're going to be trying to do here with this DOH forwarder. And one of the advantages I haven't talked about here is that not only do you get the benefits, the original benefits of the forwarder, the general forwarder we talked about, but with the DOH forwarder, now not only do we get the load balancing, the caching, some of those other uh, operational benefits, we also get security benefits. So in fact, because now all the, all the traffic leaving our network is encrypted. So even if somebody you know, catches it out here, then you know, it's irrelevant because it's encrypted. So that's the benefit here. That's why DOH is nice. Um, and it's even more secure than what a regular DNS for, it brings more security than even a regular DNS forwarder. So um, that's about it. Uh, in the next video, we'll actually start building this. Um, and hopefully it might, maybe a long video, but we can probably all get it done in one video, I'm hoping. Um, but for now, that's it. I'm gonna uh, take a brief mention of the references. Um, so this one was a pretty good explanation of DNS forwarding in general. Uh, and then this has some more intuition for why we would want to use DNS forwarding in case you're curious to read a little bit more uh, about um, the, the intuition and the logic behind DNS forwarding. So, okay, guys, um, that's it for me today. Uh, and if you enjoy the content, please give me a like and subscribe so I continue to grow and produce better and better content for you guys. And if you really, really enjoyed the content, you might even consider buying me a coffee uh, from the link below uh, in the description. And there'll be instructions there for how to actually do that. Um, and also, if you don't want to do any of those things, just please give me some feedback in the comments and let me know how I'm doing uh, or if anything's unclear or there are things you feel like I can improve upon. Um, thanks again, guys. I appreciate it. Have a great rest of the day.